I just went and picked up all my GCSE artwork. Now, before we get into this video, I am going to say I can't draw, I can't do a lot of typical artist things, so my books aren't aesthetically pleasing. There's no drawing, there's like two drawings, they're very bad. I don't do stuff like that, they're not very aesthetically pleasing, they're not very nice to look at. But I did get full marks, I got an A star, I got full marks. Somehow I did it, so if you want to know how to get an A star without drawing a single thing, then... Keep watching. I honestly just want to see like, I just want to look at it all and I feel like it'll be fun to do it on camera because I haven't seen some of this stuff for nearly three years. Like the beginning of year 10 is when I started my first book and I can't even remember what's in there. So this is going to be fun. Okay, this is my first book, I think. Yeah, this is my first book. And um, so yeah, I'm scared. Let's just open it. So on this side is all just like grades and stuff. And then this side is, I think we got given artists at the beginning to talk about. So this is the first one and this is me attempting to draw this. So as you can see, I was really good. <laughs> I had to like make something similar. He was based on like World War II or something, I think. So that's that. And then here's another one that we had to do. We just, we just got given a few artists at the beginning. And then we had to like pick a few things that like mean a lot to us. So I didn't actually draw this, I got my mum's friend to draw this, she's a graphic designer. She just drew my doll. Then we had to look at another artist, and then we had to like do an interpretation on one of his work. I haven't seen this for so long, this is so funny. Clearly I was supposed to write about it here, but I didn't. And then I had to abstract some of this work. I had to get some of these things, like here you can see there's like colour charts. And I had to make collages of them and I remember this took me so long because I just I hated doing abstract because I felt like whatever I did it never looked good oh and then I was like what am I going to do next the little very aesthetically pleasing brainstorm and then I said I was going to do some printing work so for ages I just had to do different types of print look at different types of letters and fonts and then carried on did it on different colors different paper different paper, different colours again, deciding how to print, I talked about which one I just like the most, and then I went through colours, um, great work there, and I think this was me um, doing like my final how I'm going to print, and then my teacher told me I have no AO1, I think it is, observational drawing, so I had to like do this, basically my piece was all about like dyslexia and it was going to be like a hand that I did in Modrock here like reaching out of like letters so that was that here's the final piece wow what a bad book I actually don't have it I think it was probably thrown away which is for the best because it was absolutely awful and then I looked at Barbara Kruger because her work with the letters the black and the white and the red was very similar to mine and like here's my final piece yay so it's actually my whole first book I thought there'd be more than that. So, I don't know how this book starts. Did I look at, I can't remember if they gave us these artists or if we had to find them. I think they gave us loads of artists and we just had to pick one that we liked. So I picked this because I just worked with letters and colors and stuff, I think. So I talked about what she did um, here, like symbolic letters, alpha, oh, it's a he. Yeah. And then my approach, I did, I wasn't even like vegetarian here, this is the funny thing, I'm a vegan. It says, what if we treated humans like animals? With pictures of humans and animals in the background. So that's what I did there. And then, wrote a little bit about it, and then I always, well not always, but like sometimes we got told to like just do it in black and white as well, just to talk about tones. And then... <laughs> I wanted to do something with like makeup and mermaids because it was easy so I started oh I looked at zoo zooorphism and basically did that so I've got pictures of like the makeup that I wanted to do a very very good drawing as you can see wow so good definitely full mark worthy um got some pictures of fish 
Um, this is like experiments I did. So this one here is with paint. This is with eyeshadow. This is with eyeshadow on my hands. Just pictures of it. Me doing it on someone. Just testing out. Then I wanted to do work with like special effects because I basically wanted it a mermaid to be with a hook around her mouth as if she'd been hooked out like this. So here's like the fishing hook. Yeah, it's not that great. Um, I did colour swatches because we always used to laugh and just do colour swatches whenever we didn't know what to do. So there's just like more work with that. <laughs> I'm actually in the wrong book. I feel like there should have been a lot more planning for this. I feel like that's why I got told off and had to go back and do more planning. Um, this is like, I can't remember if this is what I the final look that I went for. <laughs> oh my god, that is so bad. Um, yeah, so that's that. I did like a top. I did the mouth and then I had to do this background just because I had five hours left with the exam and they were like do something else. So that's that and then I looked at the person who did the special effects makeup for, am I going to get it wrong? For, yeah, for, for Planet of the Apes and I looked at that and then here is the famous drawing of my whole GCSE artwork. We always joke about how I had to draw an ape and can we just appreciate that for a minute like what is that I cannot draw it got to the end and my teacher was like if you draw I'm gonna have to take it out your book because you're gonna get marks taken away and then I did like a little what's next page I was stuck for an idea I didn't know where I wanted to do next and then I started thinking about Disneyland basically and started to look at Tim Walker and in the woods and Tim Burton so here's just like an artist page and Tim Walker and Cindy Sherman. Tim Walker was like a fashion photographer who did like a bit of odd things. Actually, I should talk about him in my A-level now because that's exactly what I'm doing. Sorry, anyway, this is Cindy Sherman. She did more like funny works with like funny photos and funny things with like stereotypes, mainly like female stereotypes and things. Um, and then I decided I wanted to look at Alice in Wonderland, the main reason being that I had an Alice in Wonderland costume, so it was easy. Well, loads of colour swatches. Um, wow, there was really no explaining, was there? This is really bad. Um, I saw experiments with her face because I basically was doing fairy tales gone wrong, so I wanted to like mutate her face so that it was like she drank the potion and then like her face, it was like poisonous or whatever. So like here is so here's like what a face looked like it's a really bad picture because it's really small but we got some cool photos out of it so that was like almost another piece um here's my final thing oh i forgot i did like a little collage that's cool and then here's the final three pictures that i picked and edited and then wow another mind map of like what one next i can't remember what i did <laughs> I did Little Miss Muffet. Here's like my, when I talk about two drawings, I talk about my ape and my spider because really that's the only drawings that I think I did. Um, so here's the drawing of my spider, which I actually don't even think is too bad. I had to take observational photos and I couldn't find a spider. And then one day in art, there was finding a spider, but it only had seven legs, but I gave mine eight anyway. <laughs> so then I did Little Miss Muffet. As you can see, this is the point in my book where I didn't care anymore. Hence my lovely drawing of Little Miss Muffet. <laughs> I really didn't deserve full marks. Um, and here just explained what the next fairy tale I was going to do is, but it was actually a nursery rhyme. It explained what the thing is about. It had like a really deep back story, which I'm not going to bother going into, but yes. And then <laughs> my teacher actually did this page. Yeah, look. Miss scribed. Because I didn't want to write in my book because I was too scared. Um, so here was the planning because I didn't plan anything. She was like, you need to stop and plan. So I did. We have the interior, the exterior, the location, model, pose, like everything. Like here's like a little sketch she did of what it would probably look like, like in the corner. And then here's pictures. This is like Little Miss Muffet pictures. Here's pictures of spiders and here's pictures similar of the makeup that I wanted to do. And then pictures with the spider. Oh my god, and this whole thing... I didn't even say that I was going to make a spider, did I? Um, this is what I'm going to use. Oh, I've said that I've made a spider out of mud rock, but not once did I even 
show what I was doing or anything with the spider, so that's good. Um, so here's pictures with the spider. This is the spider out of Mud Rock. I hated it, I did not like it one bit, it wasn't good at all. And then here I did location, I wanted a dark place outdoors that was like scary and that you would usually find spiders so I just took a few pictures of my garden. These are like my garage, this is like a little fence we had up at the time. Um, talked about which location I liked best. And then here were the final photos of my friend. So like this is the photo and this is the one edited. Uh, where's the close up of the makeup? This was the makeup that I did in the end. Like, it's supposed to look like loads of eyes and stuff. And she had black contacts in. So I think, like, this one was maybe my favourite. Here. And then I really liked this one too. So, <laughs> as you can see, my book gets less and less aesthetically pleasing as we go on. Oh, okay. So here, we then had to go on to our exam. My exam book is over there, and in my exam I got full marks. And I asked my teacher before I did my exam, can I get an A star, and he was like, no. And then I did my exam and he marked it, and he was like, you've got full marks. And I was like, okay, I'm going to ask you again, can I get an A star? And he was like, if you really smash out the next two weeks and add more to your coursework, because my coursework was only an A. So I had to then go on to this, which is why it's a mess, because I was rushing so much. So I said, next I'm going to stay with the theme of fairy tales, but rather than look at female victims, I'm going to focus on the male character. Obviously, normally, the male is Prince Charming, which I just kept putting Prince Charles instead. <laughs> Again, Prince Charles, Prince Charming. Every single time I wrote it, I got it wrong. Um, so it was all sort of like he comes to rescue the princess. He's so great. He's this, he's that. So I said, I'm going to do a series of photos showing Prince Charming on his own drinking because his power and ignorance has left him with no friends. And he doesn't know what to do with his money and blah, blah, blah. So he just drinks and spends his time alone. And I have typical pictures of princes. We've got Disney princes and stuff. And then my teacher told me about something called the Bullingdon Club, which is like, you can read it. Exclusive but unofficial all male students based in like Oxford, like really smart, intelligent, wealthy people that literally just used to go around like being destructive and vandalizing. And I said, this is exactly the sort of thing you would find in a person with characteristics like Prince Charming. So that's what I use as my inspiration. I looked at Barbara Kruger again. I don't know why. Oh, because of challenging stereotypes. That's what she looked at. I didn't look at her for the colours this time, I looked at it for actual stereotypes. So here's Donald Trump, here's Hitler, and it says you don't control my mind. And then I looked at location. You're not, like, supposed to use colours like this to write in. Um, I want to do a few different photos. Let's have photos of the model sitting alone drinking. Either in a dark bedroom or at a dining table. This is literally, I didn't have time to do it anywhere but my house, so I had to just pretend that's what I wanted. And then be like, look, I did what I wanted. So I just have pictures of my dad's car because we can do something in the car, the garden, a table, the garden again. And then I talked about lighting, how I wanted it to be really dramatic with a spotlight. And then costume. I had to add more to my book. And then costume. I literally just took a jacket from the drama department, added gold to it, added lace to it, added frills to it, and used that. And then here are the pictures. So before taking the pictures, I made sure I'd done like my brother's makeup. This is also why I did a mail because I just needed to do it like that night with my brother, just there and then. So I did it with my brother. I put some makeup on him, like slipped back his hair. These photos literally aren't even that good in the bedroom. I don't really like them because the spotlight is like really bad. But he's like holding beers and stuff in his bedroom. He's got his middle finger up there. He was loving this. So I said that I was really happy with the bedroom photos, which I wasn't, but the lighting is what I wanted, so I can't complain at the time. That's what I liked. I don't like it now. These are the photos that I did of him, like, alone at the dining table drinking, even though there's, like, a world map and stuff in the background. Uh, I said this location I really like of him in the car, like, drink driving as if he's passed out. I liked this one because you could see him in the mirror drinking but I didn't because I couldn't see much of him in his outfit which was the only downfall so one like this I think this was my favorite and so was this and then I have some of him like it just so happened we were getting our bathrooms done so we had loads of stuff outside so it's him like breaking a toilet with a hammer and then here's some more and then what I did was I edited them so I made them as I'm taking inspiration from Barbara Kruger I wanted them to be in black and white but I wanted the gold to stay like she used red, but I wanted gold to show like wealth 
and that he was a prince and stuff like that so I kept all the gold and I actually edited it so it was like more gold than it actually was in real life because I thought it really centered out and looked cool and then I wanted to add some text to it in sans serif because I'd done a lot of work with the letters before so I knew what sort of type of letters I wanted so I have loads of quotes here from all different princes that were a bit like dodgy so it says I get a huge buzz from spending time with kids you can't just sit there you've got to give something back and I liked where is it there's nothing like a jolly good disaster to get people to start doing something so then it ended up as these so this one here said so there's nothing like a jolly good disaster to get people to start doing something. This one says the same but the text is a bit different. This says you can't just sit there, you've got to give something back with him sitting in the car. This says I get a huge problem from spending time with kids and these both say you can't just sit there, you have to give something back. And they ended up like very Barga Cougar inspired but with the red just switch for gold so I actually really liked them. So then books were my coursework and this is my exam which I got the full marks in which enabled me to get like an A star overall. So our theme was beginning and their end. So they made us look at creation. And then within creation we had to do something that we liked. So I just did this like yin yang thing with like death and colour and vibrancy and stuff like that. And then we have the present. So we had to look at different news articles and stuff. And there was a news article at the time that was all about birthday cards being like gender neutral. So like princess ones and pink were all girls. And then all boys birthday cards were like football and star wars and things like that so i talk about all about all about the news article here and then i have like another little artist bit here so that's cool and then i made the card just by sticking like different pictures together and they just have some like stereotypical gender pictures and then i actually made the card so i did it in photoshop my teacher showed me how to do it and i made the card i spoke a lot about it and it says james and then here's the actual card it says happy birthday princess and then on the back it just says a short stuff card because my last name's short i don't know we thought it'd be cute and then here we looked at avant-garde so like this i didn't really get i'm not gonna lie to you so i have like these a bit inappropriate photos here by this artist man ray and then from inspiration from this one with the phone showing what's actually under the grass i took these so I got like people's eyes and I got different people to hold them up. And then I went on to stereotypes. So here I have a mind map of all different stereotypes. And then I have <laughs> Frank in loads of different ballet poses with his makeup on and stuff. And then I like messed around with them a little bit. I don't really know why. I just did. And then I have another artist, Richard Prince, who looked at stereotypes. Oh, I forgot I did this. <laughs> so I have these. I don't know why I did them. This says faggot down it. This says puff, fancy, gay. Yeah, I actually forgot I did this little page. And then what next? I wanted to look at, like, women's rights in different religions. So I looked at different artists who did, like, work with Jesus and stuff. Here's a whole page all about the artist. This was what I wanted my background to look like. I wanted two flags that were joined together in the middle by colour so I have the one for United Arab Emirates and then I have the suffragette flag just like mixing it and then I spoke about lighting again I spoke about poses my friend's naked in a lot of these so I'm just going to show you some of the top ones so I didn't explain in any of this what I'm doing maybe I did I can't bother to read it I got the flag and I hung it up and I had her in a hijab and a full dress with it in front of it and then I had ones where she was in half and half like straight across the line so as soon as it goes down to suffragette she was in her underwear and this side showing that like i don't know under their hijabs they're still like womanly they still like to have power and stuff i'm not going to go any lower because in the ones lower she's just in her underwear and then she'll be all over the internet which is fun and then i talked about how my photos went i did some transferring with them and stuff talked about more artists more artists Taking inspiration from Shelley Goldsmith, I decided that I'm going to print for my photos. Oh, and make a f I wanted to make a flag out of the photos that I'd taken. So I tried with different transferring. I tried transferring papers and stuff. So here's the whole flag. So down the side was one type of photo and then another and another and another. I actually have the flag here. I tried to like paint over it to give it some sort of like coordination, but I really don't think it looks like a flag. But either way, I think it is quite cool. I feel like these ones do, but I feel like you can't tell down the side that what's going on. Next, I want to focus on more politic problems. Because it was Brexit at the time, I did the EU and the... What's this called? Oh my god, what's this called? Union Jack. 
Um, I was say I was going to do them half and half. There's like a little trial on my face. Yay. <laughs> Look how aesthetically pleasing that page is. You could tell I was rushing to get an 8 star, couldn't you? And then these are the photos. I painted it all down my friend's body, which was really fun. We had a party that night and she went like a little bit blue. It was nice, something nice and quick and easy, you know. I started talking about outfits and stuff, so printing onto a school shirt. Um, have images on the shirt that show what students get up to in their spare time to contrast with the shirt and how students act in school. So photos for the shirt. I took photos of my brother in his room, like drinking, smoking and stuff alone. So these were the photos that I wanted and I edited them to get them as bright as I could and put the contrast like all the way down, the shadows all the way up so that they would sort of blend into the shirt as best as they could. So these went on the inside of the shirt. So like when they opened their shirt, it showed the person they were inside. And then on the outside, I had words. I got people to write down like stereotypical words they think of. So like cheating, drinking, weed, sex, snogging, stealing, drugs. Someone wrote blowbacks. Um, I think it was my teacher. The words all like that went on the outside in a very light color. So here I'm experimenting with what sort of colour I need them to be on the background. Here is a piece of paper with the decided colour that I took. It was like a really light grey because that was the best colour I could get. Here's a picture of it on the shirt. So this was the first shirt. This was in my exam, by the way. This was what I did my 10-hour exam. It took me about an hour. So this was the shirt. So on the outside, as you can see, you can't really see them. And then on the inside of the collar, the inside of the shirt and stuff, you could see. So this is a shirt. So it just says, like, drinking, weed, nude, kissing, parties, gay, blah, blah, blah. And then, so you open it up, and on the inside, it's all pictures of what they're like outside of school. And things like on the inside of the cuffs and on the inside of the neck when you lift it up. So that was it. And then I had a whole nother day, a whole nother five hours. That day I had so much time left, so I went and took pictures of someone with the shirt on, like in a classroom. So it looks like when they're sitting there. So this is the one with the shirt on here. So you can't actually like see anything, it just looks like normal, which was what the whole point of it was. So then that night I went home and thought, what else can I do tomorrow? And I just made like another shirt. I can't remember what it says. Oh, it was all about texts. A shirt with messages on it that teachers would think we send each other during lessons. It was like what teachers think we say about them and what we say during school versus like what we actually might say. For example, things like I just had the best effing lesson and then we'd get in trouble for saying effing when we've actually said we've had the best lesson so I wanted to put that in the bad words in red and the rest of the message in white so that like it outlines the bad because that's because that's what I feel like was a real problem in school like always picking up on the bad things and never really focusing on the good so I was debating what font to do it in because I had all day so I made like a little collage of serif text and then did another one of sans serif and then here's the page that I used, outlining all the bad words. So this is me putting it on the shirt as an experiment. Then here was the final pictures of the shirt. So it's just like an average shirt that says all of this on it. So yeah, there's the shirt. So that was all of my art. I remember coming in the next day because when I was reversing the words, because obviously I did them with transfer paper, and I tried like three different computers, I tried Word, Photoshop, Google Docs, nothing would let me flip it. So I lost an hour of my time because of technology, so technically they still owed me an hour of my exam. And I remember coming in the next day being like, can I take pictures of the shirt on? I didn't get to take pictures of the shirt on. My teacher was like, you don't need to. And I was like, please, like, even if it won't really up my work or let me like at least have my book to describe what I would have done next if I had more time. And he was like, you don't need to, you don't need to. And I was like, please, just like, I'll, I'll be two minutes and I'll be back. And he was like, you don't need to go and sit down. And I sat down, he came over to me, he was like, well done, you've got four marks. And I was like, what? And he was like, your exam book's got four marks. And I looked him in the eye and I went, so can I get an A star? And he was like, if you smash out the next two weeks, yeah. So then I went home and I did all of that work in my course up book with my brother, the Prince Charm Charming stuff. And then that is how I got an A star in GCSE art with literally not drawing and only taking photos and transfer paper. Photos and transfer paper, and you'll get an A star, promise you. <laughs> so, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting, or like you're just nosy and you want to see my work. There you go, it's not very good, but hey ho. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you like my artwork. I might do like a tips if people want. So, anyway, I hate ending videos because I never know what to say. Peace out, see you next time. Have a great day.